Well, welcome to uh, this week's podcast uh, with UAC. I'm Joseph Johnson, as uh, always, hosting uh, and joined again with um, uh, my mentor, Dr. Michael Yeses. Doc, thanks for joining me again today. Uh, my pleasure. Hope you're doing good. Yeah. Um, hey, so it's another quarantine edition. So, so uh, that's the disclaimer in, in advance. Um, but Doc, last time we talked, we were talking about you know, where did the, uh, you know, uh, how the Russians were kind of ahead of us and how, you know, we never really picked up on it and advanced it further. And in some cases, it seems like maybe we went backwards in, in different ways, um, you know, where maybe there was, a, I think primarily what was going, what happened is that we, we didn't start from where they left off because we didn't even know where they were leaving off at. So we didn't have like this, uh, a, a launch pad that was, you know, sophisticated at all. We were kind of, <clears throat> kind of reinventing the wheel in some ways and guessing about things that we probably didn't have very many clues about. We don't have the system that they had. So, you know, it's impossible to duplicate that in the same way. Uh, but one of the areas that, in my opinion, that I think that we've really, struggled with and have not done nearly as well with the Russians. And it really doesn't get talked about a lot is the area of conditioning, because, you know, this is a, an enormous, you know, kind of, you know, overhanging subject with a lot of people, you know, are the athletes in good shape? What is good shape? Like defining it. Um, what are the requirements thereof? What were the Russians doing in that way? And then kind of how have we, uh, you know, miss the boat there, or, or are we chasing the wrong things? So from, from there, if you would kind of give, give me an idea on like what the, how they looked at it. Okay. And, and, I'm, and I'm thinking mainly like from the sense of team sports, because I know that's primarily, you know, in the U S that's kind of where, where the focus is. So from the, from the point of view of team sports, how did they approach conditioning? Okay. See, conditioning was only one aspect of it. If you remember their periodization scheme, they had GPP, general physical preparation, and SPP, specialized physical preparation, which also included technique. So we are still stuck in the general. We do many general exercises to get the body strong. We're enamored with bigger muscles. I can't tell you how often I read about coaches who tell the strength conditioning coach, I just want the athletes to be bigger and stronger. See, that's sure. all they're looking at. Bigger and stronger. Because they think this is the key to success. So we do many, you know, we do aerobic conditioning. Uh, there's no set pattern to it. Uh, we just look to do, uh, make sure that they have enough aerobics in and anaerobics, as well as general strength exercises. So we do a lot of work on strengthening. And we do a lot of work on what we call conditioning, the running, to develop the uh, aerobics. And we do a pretty good job at that. But it never progresses from there. We stay on that level. So all we do to prepare the athlete is get him stronger and get him maybe a little faster or uh, a little bit more with his aerobic conditioning so he can last a little bit longer, but that's it. We don't go any further. The Russians, on the other hand, use this kind of training as a fundamental base. And this is very interesting. For the elite athlete, these general exercises were used for relaxation. They were no longer conditioning exercises. See, because they were doing many other types of training that were much more intense. So to relax, they did the general conditioning uh, just as a relaxation method. Uh, and I can give you many examples of the general conditioning, how important it was to the Russians. Like uh, I remember, if, I can't remember which team it was, but when I was in the Soviet Union, I got together with the coach early in the morning, it was about 10 o'clock. And I said, well, what are the athletes doing now? Are they still sleeping in? Oh, no, we already finished our morning exercises. So they already did 
some conditioning exercises in the morning just to invigorate the body and get everything flowing and ready to go. He says, later on today, we'll do the training. See, that was just a warm up. Uh, but for us, it would be like, hey, this was really a workout. And they, they, the general conditioning, it, it's so hard to bring out or to illustrate how great they were in shape. When we talk about being in shape, we can quantify that on a continuum from one to 10. Are we in shape, let's say, on a, on a four or five level? Then the Russians were in shape on a 10 to 15 level. And let me give you a, a classic example. I was traveling with the uh, Soviet at that time, volleyball team. We were going from Long Beach down to San Diego. And as we were driving down on, on the bus, the coach kept asking me, where can we find a nice grassy field? I want a nice field. And I said, all right. And I told the driver, hey, if you see anything, let me know. But I know of a couple of places where, you know, we we're going to go by a park and so on. So we went by. And I said, okay, now here's a nice grassy area. You want to stop here? I said, sure, let's do it now. I said, what do you want to do now? He says, oh, I want to play soccer. I said, <laughs> see, we were traveling down to San Diego. We had a meet with the uh, U.S. team. And this was a, you know, something that was set up a long time ago. And at that time, the U.S. volleyball team was not very good. So he says, yeah, we have a match tonight. And I said, but what do you mean playing soccer? You got a match tonight. He said, oh, no, no, this, this is just get us loose for relaxation. All right. So we got on a field. Everybody, including the coaches, uh, one was skins, one was, you know, with, with the shirts on. And they started playing. And they marked off the field, a regulation field. And they were playing all out. If the ball went out of bounds, they had to run after it, get it, and put it back into play. So there were reporters with us at that time, and they kept bugging me. Hey, we want to talk to the coach. Why can we interview him? So I said, all right. I asked him and uh, put my hand on my, my finger on my uh, watch, you know, and I said, uh, talk, you know. So he came over and says, no, no, no. When they stopped, they took a break. I said, okay, you want to talk now to these reporters? He said, no, 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 no. He says, that was halftime. Now we change sides. <laughs> so... Yeah, they play a whole game, and then we get done, get back on the bus, come down to San Diego, and then the athletes, you know, they wash, uh, showered up, and they took a nap. And then that night, they went out and beat, beat us in, in uh, like, two sets, I think. So look at all that conditioning that they did. They did stuff in the morning. They played soccer in the afternoon. What kind of shape were they in? These were in phenomenal shape. This is what they considered conditioning. And this was a base for their more specialized work. So the the I, I can see how somebody's gonna misinterpret this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out here uh right away. This does not mean that if you're uh, coaching a volleyball team, you should have your team work out in the morning, in the afternoon, and then go play at night, because it won't work out for you. Uh, and, and, and here's the reason. The reason why the Russians were able to do that was because of all of the previous uh, conditioning that they had done. Uh, and, 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 it, and, and Doc, I want to have you speak on this, too, because this is the I think this is the important thing for people to understand. It, it, it's not the intensity of the conditioning. It's that it was taken up gradually over time and that each biological, I don't say biological, but energy systems were developed in sequence, um, you know, over the course of time. And, and, and so, you know, when they developed the aerobic capacity, they were run distances that made sense for that particular sport and then slowly brought themselves down into the anaerobic. But it was over a course of time. And yeah, you know, if I interrupt, interrupt just yeah. a second. Um, these were elite athletes that I mentioned. 
Right. See, right. it took them at least 10 years to get there. Right. So what you're saying is right on. I'm, I'm kind of supporting it. If, yeah. When they started as youngsters, see, they did all of this general conditioning. Right. And they developed it. And every year they built upon it. So, so, so basically, like, uh, I'm going to draw a quick parallel to kind of what you've, what you've recommended for team sport athletes yourself, where, you know, they're running a, a timed mile for, a, you know, a, a certain uh, amount of time to develop that aerobic system and trying to see some improvement in that mile time. And then also they're simultaneously using the one by 20 method, which really has a, a synergistic kind of play with the, 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 the mile. Because it's, you know, because of you're building that endurance uh, as well and capillary beds in the muscle, um, and so the ability to recover uh, between like that morning and afternoon would be more expedited by a one by twenty type of an approach, because of, because of the better blood flow, uh, it, you know, and, and 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 I want you to you you to elucidate it, but there's factors that go into that that why that is going to allow for better conditioning, and, and I want to give one other little quick uh points to at the high school level here in the united states you know preseasons are two weeks long and preseasons for you know the nfl or nba are less than a month long so if you would kind of draw the, the the distinctions between that and then the way the russians would have looked at it like bat, let's say basketball or they, they didn't play football but like, let's say basketball how would they have looked at that off season? Uh, you know, leading up to. Okay. Uh, we have to distinguish what we're talking about the beginning athlete or the high level athlete. So, uh, so let, let's start with the high school level and then bring your okay. way up if you would. Yeah. Okay. Here they would be doing more general conditioning. Right. See, then the Russians do not repeat a lot of things. Like every year they wouldn't do the same thing over and over kind of the way we do, mm -hmm. because we expect our athletes to get out of shape in between seasons. The Russians didn't have this problem. They stayed in shape all the time. So this enabled them to build every year, become better and better and better. So the high school athlete, they would be spending time on conditioning. Of course, this was more important uh, than merely just playing a game. And it wasn't just general conditioning. There were a lot of very specific work. They were working a lot on their skills. See, and the conditioning related to the skills, it, it, it didn't make them better in skill execution, but they, the, the specialized exercises did. So there were more and more specialized exercises being introduced at this level. See, and we contrast, contrast that to what we do uh, we do more general every year. Seeing a lot of repetition is the same thing. Uh, so we don't get the uh, improvement except from natural maturation. But they got it from both sides. And I think this is where we miss out. I tell them, no, you got to stay in shape year round. There's no such thing as getting in shape again for the season. Yeah. So, so at that level, like the high school level, I think the biggest thing is, is, uh, and this is what I will tell, you know, coaches at, the, uh, at that level is, you know, look, if they're not in good shape two weeks before the season starts, you're not going to get them in good shape when the season starts. It's not going to happen. No. So, so this is why uh, this zero to a hundred kind of approach, like even at the NFL level, let's say, uh, also, where you get a lot of non-contact injuries, high school, college, and pro, it's primarily because they're not in shape all year round. I'd say college might do the best job of it because they have them under, you know, they 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 have to they're responsible to someone all year round because they're on scholarship. High school athletes, you know, they may play multiple sports, so you don't know, you know, what's going to happen there. Uh, and at the pro level, you know, the teams can't mandate all season, all, all year round training, so it's up to the individual athlete. So, but I think that you see the injury rates being really high um, at the high school level too, uh, be primarily because they're going from zero to a hundred, uh, you know, having not done anything. And now they think they can microwave fitness and right. it doesn't work that way. You know, like, 
Uh, I, Yuri, I think Yuri was the one that said, you know, you can have nine pregnant women, but they can't make a baby in one month. So, you know, it's... It, it, what separates an elite, world-class athlete from everyone else? Their genes make them quicker, react faster, and more explosive. What if there was a way to, in a sense, turn on those elite athlete genes in the average person? Recent advances in genomic research and sports nutrition have proven this is now possible. Introducing Myosync by Nutromic Sport Nutrition. Multiple studies show it increases quickness, explosiveness, and strength. In most cases, your vertical increases by at least one inch an hour after it's taken. Through a proprietary blend of ingredients, Myosync in effect flips the switch on those genes that make you jump higher, run faster, and lift heavier weights. Here are several Myosync testimonials. This is Daniel Stokes, he's a sprinter. What was your best time before we started training this season with Myosync? Uh, 21.5. And what's your best time as of today? 20.7. Could you um, explain to us um, what the, uh, the fast with muscle supplements done for you, Myosync? It made me more explosive, it helped with my reaction time off the ground, bring my knees up quicker, and I continually progress. This is Matt Tomey, head strength and conditioning coach for football and men's basketball at Michigan Tech. If you haven't tried Nutromic Sport Nutrition's supplement Myosync yet, you're definitely missing out. I've had athletes here um, try the supplement and really enjoy the benefits, uh, including an immediate improvement in vertical jump of about one inch. Myosync really stands out with its ability to improve power output, speed, reaction time, even potentially quick decision making. If you haven't checked out this unique supplement yet, uh, go ahead and pick up a bottle of Myosync and, and give it a shot and just see for yourself. Here is lead formulator Rick Jr. brief explanation of Myosync. Myosync evolved out of the neuroproteomic research we conducted starting back in 2005 uh, to uh, nutritionally boost the speed strength traits of well-trained athletes. These speed strength traits could include things like reaction time, starting power, uh, maximal speed, uh, quickness and agility, and also fine motor skills. Double-blind placebo studies as well as many outcome studies have been conducted on well-trained athletes from many sports and of many ages. The results of this research have shown a sizable boost in muscle contractions as well as the synchronization of these muscle contractions during speed strength activities. It, it takes what it takes. So the pr primary thing I think that the Russians did was that they realized that this is a year round process and, and it's not going to be the same all year round. It's going to be an evolving process. And then each year it might have a focus or uh, it, the focus is going to shift as time passes from one direction to another. So in the initial stages, if I'm correct, at the younger ages, you know, the athlete really needs to develop an aerobic capacity. You know, I'm talking like even down to 12 years old. They really need to develop that. That's going to be an important issue. And then as time goes on, it might, you know, slowly migrate from that into other things. But but that 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 is going to, by the time that that athlete is 18, you know, they've had five, six years, you know, this year-round conditioning. And correct me if I'm wrong, this would have been the Soviets' approach. It would have been a year-round kind of, approach if they went to a sports school let's say at, at 12 years old oh definitely see the well i guess we can sum it up this way in the early years the general conditioning will give you better athletic performance than any kind of specialized work but as time goes on with each year you bring in more and more specialized work and by specialized work i mean doing exercises that duplicate the same neuromuscular pathway as seen in execution of the skill. And you want to develop strength in the same range of motion as seen in execution of the skill. See, now when you do a general exercise, uh, like the knee drive exercise that, you know, I, I developed up about 10 years ago, uh, you can drive the knee, you drive the knee forward from behind the body. 
So you're strengthening the hip flexors beginning with the leg behind the body. But in general conditioning, they just have you in a standing position and just raising the knee. Yeah. Well, that develops the hip flexors, but not the way it's used in sports. See, so this is where we need some of the specificity coming in as they get a little bit older. It has to be a little more specific, so it has a direct effect on the total skill execution or the game performance. And, 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 and two things that I think are, are, are would be interesting for, for, for the listener is that the aerobic capacity in the beginning stages is, is really ultimately later on going to be the bottleneck for the development of the other system, the anaerobic later, because if the aerobic's not developed really well, yeah, you're going to be totally limit. Your anaerobic development is going to be limited by whatever degree the aerobic is developed to. Right. So you, you can't. Uh, so so the mistake that maybe a coach might make is they they bring the athletes in. Let's say it's football, and they say, look, you know, nobody runs more than you know, let's say you know, a hundred yards in a game. They said, well, we're going to keep all of our sprinting down to you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards. Uh, which sounds like sound reasoning. It's not because that's going to the amount that they can and keep speed up on those repeat sprint ability is going to be limited by the previous aerobic work that they did. And if they didn't do any, you know, you you have a finite uh, ability to improve the anaerobic if you haven't done any previous uh, aerobic work. Yeah, see, and you're bringing out a great point that is often overlooked. Uh, yeah, aerobics is really the whole base. Without aerobic development, everything else is not. You need that aerobic first. And it starts with the very early years. But you don't start, start the uh, kid nine years old, and, okay, we're going to go out and run a marathon today. Right. So, you know, it, it's gradual. It's still playing sports and doing things. You're still developing the aerobic system. You become a little more sophisticated, you know, as they begin training, when they're 13, 14, and so on. Now a little bit more regimented, but it's still basically aerobic. Because when you do anaerobic work, you need recovery in between. And the recovery is based on how good your aerobic system is. Right. So that's why you can't get away from it. Right. You need the aerobics in order to do the anaerobics. Right. Uh, so... Yeah, and, and, and for these teams, see, especially the pro teams, to think that they can do all of this, you know, in uh, just a couple of weeks, they shouldn't even think of doing any of this kind of work at that level. When these players come in, they should already be in great shape. Now let's work on our strategy and play execution. This is what they have to improve. See, right. And injury prevention, that should already be taken care of with their general training, uh, as well as the specialized training. So when we have it backwards, <laughs> by repeating the same thing all the time, we don't make any progress. Right. And this is why we, we, we got to change how we look at things and how we approach them. So let me, let me, let me throw this at you too, because this is another one where I see a big error is made. So, Soccer is a sport in the United States where, you know, conditioning is kind of paramount, where they look at that and they say, you know, this is really uh, what really matters uh, the most is conditioning. And so during the season, you'll have a soccer coach, for example, maybe well, in the middle of the season had the athletes run, let's say, three miles. And, you know, it's funny because, number one, that, that ship has already sailed. You know, by the time the season comes around, that aerobic work is no longer our, our critical issue. It should have been done a long time ago. Right. And if we do it right now in the middle of the season, it actually could be counterproductive because the athlete's not recovering fast enough by the next workout, uh, you know, to where that would have a positive effect. Or if it's closer to a game. And plus three miles, you know, that distance is getting out there where it's it's not developing uh, on the continuum of, of uh, aerobic capacity to where kind of where you want to be. You know, uh, it's a little bit longer than probably is necessary. But but would you talk about that real quick, too? Because they they tend to be like 
teams or sports, especially at the high school level, where the, where they'll run long distances during the season. So they're not even working on anaerobic. Now they're looking at the aerobic, which is kind of late. Talk about that, if you would, just kind of like what the error is in that thinking. All right. If it's done most effectively uh, or scientifically, if you want, you don't do any of this kind of running during the season. During the season should be all strategic and tactical work. Now you can do a little bit on sprinting and whatnot, but see, the practices should do this for the, for the uh, uh, let's say, acceleration. Hey, you need more acceleration? Okay. Let's work on acceleration and kicking a ball or doing whatever, let's say on a fast break uh, on, a, on a goal. So you do it with a play. You don't just do it for conditioning. But prior to the season, yes, then you do it for conditioning. But once you have that conditioning, you have it. Just maintain. Don't go back to repeating it again every year. See, right. So yeah. How, uh, give me a quick uh, synopsis or, or your, just a point on how does that affect the athlete? Let's say you're in the middle of the season and I'm going to give you a scenario. It's Wednesday. We got a match on Friday and you have the athletes run four miles. Tell me how what how, how that's going to affect Friday's match. Well, depending upon the condition of the athlete, I say it might slow them down. Uh, you can't do uh, general work or general conditioning work in the middle of a season or prior to. Um, and maybe it's not specific to soccer here, but I recall too many athletes, after we work with them, we get them game ready. They're explosive, they're fast, they're quick, everything. The team prior to the season or immediately before sends them to specialized camps. All these camps, they taught themselves as we're going to make you faster, bigger, stronger, fast, you know, the whole bit. They go to these camps, they come back, and they're slower and weaker and more tired. See, so because the camps were geared for guys out of shape. Yeah. But when you're in shape and you do work that's suitable for out of shape people, it's going to interfere and ruin your game. Once you're up there, you've got the maximum speed and explosiveness, you got to go into game play. You don't revert and do general work. That's going to screw you up. So, so what, I, what I've told coaches a lot of times, you know, during the season conditioning, like they'll use that term real broadly, but I always tell them that, look, you know, you have to uh, take into account the amount of time it takes to recover from that. And if yeah. you have games, you know, like if you have a game, uh, like, let, the, I mean, the most time that you could ever possibly even have would be two days. So let's say you condition on Wednesday and you have a game on Friday. They're not going to be recovered fully from that. Nope. So, so just the, the, there's a false notion that if I run them hard on Wednesday, they'll be even in better shape on Friday. But the, the opposite is true. Actually, you'll be in worse shape uh, and more prone to an injury and slower. Your repeat sprint ability will be down. So you'll actually be slower on the field and more prone to injury. Uh, is, is that correct? Yes. See, and I think we should bring out that the conditioning done in season interferes with your game play. You cannot perform as well. See, and we want the best performances. So stay away from conditioning in season. It's not going to help them any. It's going to destroy them. But see, coaches have to learn how to use their developed physical abilities. Put these developed physical abilities to use. There's a drill or a, you know a practice that we want, or a, a um, some uh, strategy that we want to use in a game. Now let's work it out and 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 repeat it often enough. Now we're using the aerobic ability or the anaerobic ability or the strength abilities put it to use in the game into the strategy into the tactics not just to be conditioned and that, that's old hat exactly it, the the conditioning 
you're trying to be able to uh, participate in your sport at the maximum speed for in in the amount allotted for that game, whether it be you know 24 minutes, 32 minutes, whatever that case may be. You want to be just as fast at the end of the game as you were at the beginning of the game without any fatigue. Now, that's obviously the ideal, uh, optimal. But the only way that's going to happen is, uh, you know, we use, they use repeat, repeat. Come on, we got stuck there. There's nothing coming. The screen is frozen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm just looking at your face. Uh, the, the, sc the screen, yeah, the screens are, are frozen. 